Hello world, this is Jeffrey, JGP146 Blake for team level 5, and I'm coming to you with a follow up from our last video. I highlighted Honchkrow GX as potentially the best, or certainly one of the best Pokemon coming out of Unbroken Bonds, and I'm here with a deck list to try to defend that Metacall. I believe the deck that I'm putting together has a real shot at beating pretty much any other deck, uh, but it's not there yet. You'll get to see what it does and why I feel that it's good though, and that's what I think is important. So without further ado, let's dig in. Okay, so before we get started, I do want to note, we have some proxies. This is real, this is proxy. We have some proxies, and you're going to have to forgive me because I've only been to one pre-release. So I don't have all of the cards, I have many. Uh, there are also a few proxies of cards that I do have that I've loaned out to team members. So you know, you'll have to forgive me there too. Uh, but with that, we'll go ahead, dig in, and the proxies are all printed and should be pretty easily recognizable for what they are. So first things first, we start out and we are playing four Murkrows. Murkrow is the pre-evolution to Honchkrow. We are playing the Unbroken Bonds Murkrow because he has the attack for a single dark energy. Uh, you choose a random card from your opponent's hand and shuffle it back into the, well, they shuffle it back into their deck. Uh, so that kind of works with our theme of trying to control what our opponent can do and limit their options. Uh, the other Murkrows that are in standard currently have attacks that force your opponent to switch and then another attack that doesn't let your opponent retreat. So neither of those really fit what we're trying to do here as well as the Unbroken Bonds Murkrow. But of course the most relevant thing is our main attacker and that is Honchkrow GX. So Honchkrow GX has an ability, Leader of the Night, may have been renamed on the actual English print, but what it says is that if you are in the active with Honchkrow GX, if you have Honchkrow GX in the active, then your opponent is unable to attach special energies or play down a stadium or attach a tool. So that's pretty powerful. Uh, lots of decks play special energies, as we'll talk about. We have ways around those that don't. Um, and it, it can be really helpful. Uh, also helps because we play a black market Prism Star Stadium, and if your opponent cannot replace the stadium, uh, that means it's going to stick pretty well unless they get out the you know new Marshadow that discards a stadium. Uh, unless they're they're going down that route, you're gonna have your black market in place for a long time, and that's cool. Uh, I actually played a testing game several in, against a baby Blacephalon deck, and there were games where because they couldn't bounce the stadium, they couldn't uh, get heat factory into play to draw into their pieces, and then they couldn't. From there, like they they managed to get a welder and attach energy with the welder, but they were left with only a beast energy, and they couldn't attach it. So boom, they weren't able to attack, weren't able to take knockout, and I ended up winning. But that's neither here nor there for what we're talking about. We also play a copy of. Baby Honchkrow. So, well, we wouldn't play Honchkrow GX just for the ability, though. We're playing it for the GX attack, first of all, and then the secondary attack that we can use every turn. Normally, that would be considered the primary attack, but for our purposes, it's a secondary attack. So what does the GX attack do? Well, it's called Unfair GX, and it is unfair. 
It discards two cards from our opponent's hand. Not random cards, cards that we get to choose after we've seen their hand. That sounds okay, but when combined with a deck built around that, it is powerful and disgusting. Uh, the quote unquote primary attack is a uh, simple dark DCE hit for 90 damage while spreading a little bit. And the little bit is that if your opponent has GX Pokemon in play, you're doing 30 to up to two of those on the bench. Uh, if you have if they have one GX on the bench and one in the active, you cannot do the second 30 to the active. It only affects the bench. Then we also play a one of Baby Honchcrow with the Raven's Claw attack for a DCE. He does 10 damage plus 10 more damage for each damage counter on all of your opponent's Pokemon. So if you've gotten off one base attack with Honchkrow GX that did, assuming they had two GX's down, that did 150 damage. This is going to hit for 160. With a choice band, this will take some knockouts for you. Um, of course, if you had a choice band on the Honchkrow GX, that buffs the damage even more. So either way, you're hitting you know 190 and, and continuing from there. We also have an attacker in the form of Baby Buzzle with his Sledgehammer attack. Uh, we're only ever attacking with him to use Sledgehammer. I originally had two copies of him to make sure that we could get him out when we wanted him, but your deck gets clogged up with two copies and we only ever can attack when you know, we're using Sledgehammer. That's almost the only time we'll ever want to use him, so I think one copy is all we need. Then we are playing a Pokemon line that sort of enables everything. We're playing Mistrevious, and I have no idea if this is the optimal Mistrevious. I did not look yet, um, given that it does not have a dark attack. There's a decent chance that it is not. I say dark, darker colors. There's a decent chance that Mistrevious is not really the optimal. This is not the optimal version, but it works well enough for our purposes. Now we're playing a four count and then a three count of Magius, which is the whole reason we're playing Mistrevious in the first place, because Magius has the ability that when you want during your turn, anytime before you attack, you can knock out Miss Magius. Your opponent draws a prize and you draw until you have seven cards. That might sound a little counterintuitive, but it's really powerful to help you draw through your deck. Um, it also, you can combine, you know, knocking out a couple of Miss Magiuses with the Sledgehammer turn on Buzzwell, and you're left able to Sledgehammer as soon as you want, more or less. Uh, I have successfully pulled off a double Miss Magius Discard, well, knockout, followed by a sledgehammer on turn one against Picaram for knockout, uh, leaving them very, very much SOL. Getting back to the main part of the deck, the denial portion, uh, you know, we use Honchkrow's GX attack to discard two cards. If your opponent has a big hand, that's not very helpful. So we want them to have a small hand. So we play two Marshadows with the Let Loose ability so that we can have our opponent down to four cards when we're discarding two. Uh, that's a lot better for us and a lot worse for them. Uh, in order to draw into these pieces, you know, we, we do have the Miss Magius, but we also play a one of Dedene to help us get there initially. And we play a one of Tapu Lele to help us get a supporter uh, again, primarily used both of these guys, primarily a turn one thing for us, but obviously later on in the game you can make use of them. Okay, now let's get into supporters. We play a four count of Cynthia, because Cynthia is a shuffle draw supporter and we have 
you know, lots of pieces that we don't necessarily want to discard. So um, we don't want to play th something like Ingo and Emmett. Um, and we also have a lot of pieces that we don't want to keep necessarily in our hands. So playing a high count of Lily doesn't work for this deck. I tried it. Uh, we play one Lily primarily for that turn one uh, with Tapu Lele. We get those eight cards. Um, that's pretty much the only time I use Lily. We play a Judge to continue, you know, messing up our opponent. If we don't manage to totally lock them out of the game on turn one, we can, you know, once they build their hand back up and have some decent stuff in hand, presumably, we can get rid of it again. Uh, we play a Tate and Liza primarily for the shuffle draw, but also a lot of our Pokemon do have a high retreat cost. Honchcrow is a two retreater. Buzzwool is a two retreater. That switch effect can be important at times. We play a Bill's Analysis, so we're not just shuffle draw all the time. We can seek out specific pieces that we need or, or want to continue our mission. And then we play two Guzma so that we can target down specific opponents, specific Pokemon, uh, in order to further our goals. Getting into more of the trainers, we're going to look at the non-Pokemon search trainers first. I mentioned already Black Market. That's our only stadium right now. And what it does is when you attach a dark energy to a dark Pokemon, then that Pokemon, uh, when knocked out, rewards your opponent with one fewer prize than it normally would. So Honchkrow GX becomes a one prize knockout. And Baby Honchkrow, if you have a dark energy attached for some reason, becomes a zero prize knockout. We play one choice band. Uh, I know, that seems really small. I had two in here for a while, but space is tight with what we're trying to achieve. So I dropped it down to one. I uh, may see it go back up to two if I can get there. But right now that's where we're at. And I don't really have problems hitting that choice band when I want it. So uh, with all the draw, that works. We play a four count of Chip Chip Ice Axe. So Chip Chip Ice Axe does one thing, and that is that it lets us look at our opponent's top three cards and choose the worst one. We put that one on top and then the other two get shuffled back into their deck. So what that means is We've marshadowed them, we've let loose, and they have four cards in hand. Then we use the GX attack, unfair GX on Honchkrow, and we discard the two best cards they have in hand. So they've got two junky cards in hand. Then we've also, before we GX'd, we used a copy of Chip Chip X and made sure that when they top deck, they top deck. A junkie card. So now they have two junkie cards in hand, they're gonna top deck a junkie card, and then the next turn we'll play another axe to make sure that they top deck another junk card, and then the next turn, and then the next turn. You can see how this is is going. You know, we can go through our deck, we can start hitting those, you know, multi-step KOs, uh, and it you know, our opponent is not getting it because we're making sure our opponent doesn't get out of this until we've spread around enough damage, done enough hitting, that they are, are already up a creek. Now, to make all this happen, we have to get out our Pokemon as well. So we play four Nest Balls to get out our basics. Uh, when I say basics, I'm not referring to these four. I'm exclusively talking about Miss Dreavius, uh, Murkrow, and Buzzwall. We play two Mysterious Treasure to get out Marshadow, Lele, and the Mysterious Miss Magius line. We play four copies of Dusk Stone. This is a new item that comes out in Unbroken Bonds and it makes everything in the deck possible. So what it does is that when you play it, if you have a Mysterious or a Murkrow on your bench, 
you get to search for the evolution. It can be a GX or a non-GX, it doesn't matter. And you get to play it down immediately to evolve that Pokemon. So you get a turn one Honchkrow GX, you get a turn one Miss Magius. And that is what enables all the crazy shenanigans that you pull with this deck. We also play four Ultra Ball. Uh, this feels actually a little heavy to me. We may drop down on Ultra Balls at some point. Uh, I'm going to experiment with some changes and that might be where I make some of them. Okay, four energy. We play a four count. Yes, these are proxies because they are loaned out. A four count of the Fighting Dark Fairy unit energy. So this counts as dark energy for Black Market Prism Star. It counts as fighting energy for Buzzwool. And that's basically all we need it to do. It's count as dark and count as fighting. We also play one beast energy, again, for Buzzwool to maximize the damage he can do. You know, attach the beast energy, attach the choice band, and Buzzwool is now able to sledgehammer for 180 against Pokemon that are not weak to fighting. We play one Rainbow Energy just to increase the number of ways that we can attack with Honchkrow, GX, and with Buzzwool. Then we play four Double Colorless Energy. Uh, these simply power up Honchkrow GX. Simple as that. Um, I guess, or Baby Honchkrow. Uh, and in in a really bad situation, you could use them on Lele as well. Uh, and that's it. That's the deck. Um, like I said, there there are a few changes I'm still looking at. This is very much an early draft, but it's been pretty consistent so far. Uh, I'm thinking I may want to switch out a few cards. I'll probably start with an Ultra Ball and and build from there. Uh, trying to increase our chances of digging further into the deck. So I might take out something, take out a few things in order to get Acrobikes in to just kind of speed through the deck that much faster. But so far, this is working well. Uh, every deck that I've been up against, I've been able to beat. Jirachi throws a wrench in the works sometimes. But even with Jirachi, a lot of times opponents are not able to get out of the lock in time. With that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up both the stream today and the overall video. This has been Jeffrey, JGB146, Blake for level 5, signing off.